This is my second visit to New Zealand. The first time was back in 1981. I'm in Christchurch, about to rent a car to drive to the Mount Cook National Park. Christchurch is like a lost corner of old England. Willows and conker trees line the Avon River as it meanders through the city's heart. Next day, I called at the car hire office. So, I now have a car for the next part of my trip. It's such a pleasure to drive along these quiet roads. I'm now heading towards Mount Cook National Park. I'm heading for the mountain Amari's called Air Raki, the Cloud Piercer. At 12,500 feet, Mount Cook is the highest point in Australasia. It's where Sir Edmund Hillary trained before going on to make his first ascent of Everest. And it's where all aspiring New Zealand mountaineers come to cut their teeth. This is how I remember it back in 1981. I was hitchhiking up this road 27 years ago. lucky with the weather but the weather forecast said it may not last so tomorrow it may not be so good so I'm taking advantage of what I've got now I arrive at Mount Cook and follow the signs to the campsite Bad move. During the night, I was awoken by madly flapping tent fabric. It was a very windswept spot. Had a bit of a disaster through the night. A horrible wind sprung up and it got worse and worse. About four o'clock this morning, the tent pole broke. But I managed to repair it, I think. So I packed all my stuff up, ended up sleeping in the car. Anyway, the weather's not looking too good. It's raining on and off. By mid-morning, the weather had vastly improved to enable me to walk along the Hooker Valley Trail towards Mount Cook. New Zealand is a land of many secrets, rare pleasures and great variety. It offers excitement for the daring, the freedom to enjoy, its stunning scenery and wildlife, which has been carefully preserved. I remember this bit. It was just a thin plank of wood going across the stream. Now they've built a proper bridge. Mount Cook is getting clearer. This region has always been the focus of climbing. On the 2nd of March 1882, three climbers after a 62 hour epic failed to reach the summit. Two years later, three local climbers, Tom Fife, George Graham and Jack Clark, spurred into action by the news that two well-known European climbers were coming to attempt Cook, set off to climb it before the visitors. On Christmas Day 1884, they ascended the Hooker Glacier and the North Ridge, a brilliant climb in those days, and stood on the summit. Over there is the Hooker Glacier spilling into this lake. There's unlimited scope here for climbing for the experienced. But beware, 180 people have lost their lives on Cook. Recently, at a rate of about five per year, it's hardly an easy ascent. Oh, it's 
getting really warm now. The wind's dropped, thank goodness. I didn't think today was going to turn out like this. All that rain we had this morning. The highly changeable weather is an important factor around here. Mount Cook is only about 30 miles from the coast. Catching the weather conditions blowing in over the Tasman Sea, the weather can change abruptly and you can suddenly find yourself in a storm. The sky clearly shows the Southern Cross, which can't be seen from Britain. On leaving, I look around to find that I'm being chased by some very big and threatening storm clouds. I'm now on the road to Milford Sound, my next stop. Rain or shine, calm or storm, dawn or dusk, it's ever changing, always dramatic and never dull. In every sense, Milford Sound is quite simply New Zealand at its best. Fieldland National Park's greatest appeal is Milford Sound, hemmed in by walls of rock that rise from the waterline sheer up to 4,000 feet. Its dominant feature is the 5,560 feet pinnacle of Mitre Peak. Opposite the peak, Bowen Falls tumbles 520 feet before exploding into the sea. The area is spectacularly wet. The average annual rainfall is around 20 feet and it rains an average of 200 days a year. Milford Sound itself is 12 miles in length and about 840 feet at its deepest. The fields are home to some fairly unusual and hardy wildlife. Fur seals are commonly seen lazing about on rocks. The short cruise around the sound brings me back to the landing stage. 